This is Van's new MTE3 boot, and I love the look of this boot, but it's $200. So I'm not sure if it's really worth it, because I've only cut apart like the classic old school Vans. So today we're gonna cut this in half to see if it's really worth it. You've probably seen Carl Friedrich on the channel before. They've sponsored a handful of videos, and we cut apart one of their briefcases on the channel, and I'll put a link to that below if you haven't seen that. But if you don't know who Carl Friedrich is, they're a luxury leather goods brand that produces a range of elegant yet functional everyday accessories. And they work with the finest quality materials and craftsmen to produce items that are a joy to use and last a lifetime. And they say their aesthetic vision is understated, modern, and inspired by Scandinavian minimalism. And the thing that I like about Carl Friedrich is they use Italian vegetable tan vachetta leather that ages really beautifully and develops a really nice patina. Their products are long lasting and durable and they're all backed by a lifetime warranty. Plus they come with a 100 day trial with the full refund option available. And you can get any of their products personalized that make them a really great gift. And the product I'm showing you today is their carry on luggage. It's a lightweight polycarbonate shell that's zipperless with an aluminum frame for more durability. And it has little Italian leather detailing with silent 360 Japanese Hinatomo spinner wheels. But the thing that I think is really cool is it has the option to connect to a power bank and charge on the go so you're not sitting at the airport just waiting for that outlet to get free. You've got an outlet basically in your luggage. So if that carry-on luggage sounds like something you'd be interested in or the other products that we've talked about and reviewed on the channel, be sure to use the link in my description and use the code RA015 to save 15% off any of their products. Thanks again to Carl Friedrich for sponsoring this video. Our Black Friday sale is coming up if you want early access and an extra 5% off on Thursday only on Thanksgiving Day. Sign up to the limited edition email list so that you get exclusive and early access to the Black Friday sale. But now let's go over the boot information. So the brand is Vans. The style is the Ultra Range XO High Gore-Tex MTE3. The colorway I have is marshmallow and black. They weigh one pound seven ounces. They retail for $200 and they are made in China. Now let's go over the information that we can gather about this boot before we cut it in half. And I love the look of this boot. I think it's so cool. It kind of reminds me of like a, almost like a Gundam themed boot for you anime fans. And it comes in a few other colorways that are less flashy. The all black version is a pretty good looking boot. But the Vans MTE line stands for made for the elements. And for some reason they decided not to add the F to the acronym. But it kind of seems like it's more branded to have the appearance and the look and the features of an outdoorsy boot without the actual durability but I don't know for sure, so that's why we're cutting it in half. So now let's go over the information, starting with the upper. So this upper is made with all sorts of different materials. You've got this harder TPU toe guard, then this mesh fabric that's kind of all over the boot. There's also a fair amount of cheap suede on this boot with the reinforcing of the eyelets on the top and the bottom, and then the quarter over here. There's also several spots where you've got a thinner, like rubber membrane over top of some stitching to give it some reinforcement, mostly probably for the look. And at the heel, you've got another piece of black leather with a, a nice embossed print in the back with the nylon pull, pull loop. So it's just kind of all over the place with the different type of materials. But the leather itself that I can speak on is a cheap suede leather. You know, it, it doesn't seem like it has a grain in it at all, in it, but, it, but it doesn't necessarily need a super high quality leather for the parts of the boot that are leather. Then moving to the lining in the inside of this boot. So this is a fabric lined boot with a 3M Thinsulate insulation package to keep your feet nice and warm. And it also has a Gore-Tex internal booty that helps keep the water out and keep your feet nice and dry. Then deeper on the inside, you can see there's a little bit of like a chevron pattern fabric. That's a, a fabric you see in a lot of different boots. It's a moisture wicking fabric. So just the lining alone has a ton of different materials on the inside. And then if we move to the construction, so I'm pretty sure this is a cemented construction. Obviously there's no stitching around it. So it's safe to assume this is a cemented construction, but I don't know, I don't know how well it's cemented. So we'll see when we get it cut in half, we'll try to rip apart one of the halves. And then if I pull this insole out, it's just a, a average foam insert, a PU open cell foam. It is removable so you can always swap it out if you need more support. And then the outsole is what they call their Ultra Range XO MTE3 outsole featuring all track, all, all weather rubber and which is just a fancy jargon for a lugged rubber outsole. And if we test the durometer of this outsole, comes in at like 75, 77 range, so a good density. The only concern I do have about this is those the low spots seem like it's a really thin piece of rubber. So if you were to happen to step on a really sharp rock or something really sharp, you could potentially cut the outsole, getting to that, that soft midsole and prematurely wearing your boots out. And as for that midsole, you can see it up here on the sidewall, it's an EVA foam. They call it their triple density ultra cush EVA midsole. So I don't exactly know what they mean by triple density, but one thing I do really like that I think is pretty interesting is they've got this molded harder plastic heel cup that I'm assuming works as the shank because you can see it runs all the way up through where the shank usually would be. 
and it seems like it does give the boots some rigidity. So I think that's kind of a cool little feature, but I don't know if it's an actual functional part of the boot or if it's just for looks. So let's cut this thing in half to find out and see what else is inside of this boot. I love cutting boots with no shank. They're so much easier to cut. So let's see what's inside. So I don't, I don't know what they mean by triple density in this midsole, but it's clearly one layer of single density foam. And this is ridiculously soft foam. Let's see what, I don't even know if this will register on this. It registers a 25 shore A and it's really, really soft. So that's why when you put these things on, they're so stinking comfortable because your foot just squishes into all that foam. But it's not triple density, unless they're considering that little foam layer above a different density and a different layer of the midsole and that fiber board above that and the cellulose board above that. I don't know, It's but to be honest, it's just marketing jargon that Vans is using to try to make this look more appealing and have more features and more benefits when in all reality, it's just a classic EVA foam midsole. So they're, so they're being a little bit generous on their terms. But what's really cool is now you can see this Gore-Tex booty on the inside here that prevents all that water on the outside to seeping into the inside of your foot. And you can see that thinsulate layer. See all these little fibers? That's what keeps your feet warm. And we can also see that that little heel cup that gives that structure and acts as a shank does wrap all the way through and it is a decent thickness and it does give it some support. Maybe not as much as like a classic shank, but it does give it some support, which is really nice for this soft of a midsole because like I've complained about before, when you have a really soft midsole, a lot of times your boots get a little squishy. So if you step wrong on the heel, the boot almost collapses and you can roll your ankle really easily. But having this red reinforcing will help prevent that while still maintaining the squish of the boot, which I really, really, really like. It's a smart way of fixing that problem. The last thing I wanna point out is you can really see how thin that outsole is between the lugs. You know, it's not, it's not maybe as thin as I thought, but if I was buying this for some real durability, this is a little bit on the thin side, but for casual wear, it's probably fine. So now let's do the rip test and see how well these things are cemented together. Ooh, I feel like I can get it to go. Maybe not. I'll try from the inside out. Ooh. Okay, it's cemented pretty well. Part of the reason it's so hard to tear is that EVA foam midsole wraps all the way up to the side. So you've got a lot more contact with the glue and the outsole wrapping up to keep this boot together. But you can see that the insides of this boot are a little bit floppy, which I've complained about before because, because when those layers are, are moving independently and they're flexing a lot, they tend to wear out a lot quicker than solidly cemented layers. Now let's do a quick waterproof test. So pretty clearly it is waterproof. So pros of this boot, I love the look of these boots. Even though I probably never wear them, I love them. Like the Gundam style boots. There's a lot of fun features and features that give you some benefits like the insulation and the waterproofness. And there, there is some leather on it, which are at some of the more key points to give a little bit of reinforcement for the wear and tear of this boot. And the biggest pro of this boot is they're so comfy. These are ridiculously comfy boots. And then to cons, so it's a little bit low in the rubber on the low spots of the outsole. The insides are a little bit loose and floppy and lots of synthetic materials that have some benefits to them, but for durability wise, they'll never last quite as long as leather. 
especially on the inside of the boot. So overall, I think it's a really cool boot, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a high quality boot or a really long lasting boot, but I think it's decent. I don't think there's any huge red flags that would prevent me from buying this boot. And a lot of the cons, like the loose floppy insides, are counterbalanced by some of the benefits of the synthetic materials. So why would somebody consider buying this boot? Well, if you're looking for a boot that's gonna keep your feet warm, dry, comfortable, while looking like this, it seems like it's a pretty good option. And if you're okay with the $200 price point, just keep in mind you're paying for the style of the boot and some of these synthetic materials. So let me know what you guys think. And if you've had these, your experience with them, and, and let me know what other boots you want me to cut apart before this winter's over, because we've kind of been on a tear with a bunch of terrible boots from reputable brands. And thank you guys for everything you guys do. And don't forget about the Black Friday sale starting on Thursday. Sign up for the email list. Thank you guys. See ya.